Hello, this is a short little video on how the coronavirus pandemic has affected the market for toilet paper and basically giving a microeconomic answer as to why it's very hard to find toilet paper down at the supermarket now. Now, um, if you've been down to the supermarket recently, you'll see pretty much empty aisles like the one pictured here. And basically this has been the situation at supermarkets ever since the stay-at-home orders were issued um, across the United States and actually in other countries as well. Now the typical answers given for this toilet paper shortage is because of hoarding behavior. People have just gone out and bought insane amounts of toilet paper uh, because they feel that they need to do it and they need to buy up all the supplies now because they won't be able to get some later. Um, there is also the idea in behavioral economics of risk bias, that people are basically trying to uh, minimize the risks in their lives. When you're faced with a lot of different risks, one way to exercise some control of your life is to eliminate some of the risks. Now, these examples might explain the initial rush on toilet paper in the toilet paper market and cleaning out the shelves but they don't do a good job of explaining why this shortage has lasted more than one month. So, in order to get to an answer as to why this problem has gone for more than a month, let's start off with a basic sort of microeconomic view of the market for toilet paper and a reminder that the price is the equilibrium point between the supply and demand curves in the market and ideally when a market is functioning that equilibrium price um, will be the point where uh, the quantity supplied equals the quantity demand and the result will be no shortage. So what's happened um, because of coronavirus? Well, part of it has been an increase in demand for toilet paper. Um, basically, we've seen the demand go up and according to traditional market economics, the basic result should be that um, demand goes up, price will increase, and this will bring more supply into the market and we'll just end up at a new equilibrium we won't have a shortage. But this clearly is not what we've been seeing happening down at market, uh, down at the supermarket. So what is the root of this problem? Well, one way of approaching the issue with a uh, shortage of toilet paper is to recognize that there's not one market for toilet paper, but rather there are two markets for toilet paper. There is the domestic market, i.e. what people use in their houses, and then there's the commercial market, what people use when they're at work. Now, the issue with um, this situation is that most of the time, this works perfectly fine. Uh, people buy their toilet paper for their houses at the supermarket, and institutions, schools, workplaces, and so forth buy large bulk uh, amounts of toilet paper uh, for the commercial market. And both markets have worked very well for a very long time. All of a sudden, with the coronavirus, these two markets seem to have broken down. Basically, the coronavirus has created a problem that people are home all the time. And that has created a situation where people are effectively doing all their business at home. And what that means is that the demand for toilet paper in the domestic market has gone up. Now, this is not hoarding behavior. It's not something that's irrational. It's actually quite rational. Because people are at home all the time, they're using the bathroom at home all the more, and they need more toilet paper there. Now, the other side of this is the commercial paper market. Uh, the demand curve has moved in on the commercial paper market because people aren't going to work. And so in essence, the two markets, we have a divergence in price. Uh, price in the commercial market has gone down, or at least should be going down. And in theory, the price for the domestic paper market should be going up. But we don't see that. Instead, we see shortage. And so we still have this mystery here. But let's continue on with this. Um, two market view. The normal economic answer to having some kind of shortage in two different markets where we have a common good, for instance in this case with the domestic market for toilet paper and the commercial market for toilet paper, is that um, because of the higher price currently in the domestic market, if the market was functioning, what would happen is Basically, suppliers would take uh, toilet paper from the commercial market where the price is lower and they would ship it over to the domestic market and the supply there would increase. And that this shifting of supply from the commercial market to the domestic market should bring down the price in the domestic market and also raise up the price in the commercial market, bringing both prices into line where they were originally. 
So why isn't this happening? Well, there's a big problem. There's basically a production misalignment between toilet paper made for the domestic market and toilet paper made for the commercial market. Basically, domestic market toilet paper are small, normal rolls that you see at the supermarket. However, an awful lot of the toilet paper made for commercial markets, for institutions, schools, workplaces, and so forth, are much larger rolls of toilet paper that are de designed to be on big dispensers that can hold several rolls at the same time. They're, in essence, two different products. Yes, they're both toilet paper, but they're packaged in different ways. Uh, there's also the problem that most of the toilet paper in the commercial market is packaged on pallets for schools and workplaces and offices and institutions. Uh, most people in the domestic market don't buy their toilet paper on pallets. So the, this gets to the root problem, which there is no way to really move the supply of paper from the commercial market to the domestic market. So it's hard to actually increase the supply in the domestic market. This is an important point, because if we just focus on the supply curve for toilet paper in the domestic market, the reality is the supply curve is probably quite inelastic. It's not very responsive to price. Some reasons for this is that toilet paper production would be capital intensive. It's really mostly an automated production process. And because there's so much capital involved, it's probably quite difficult to adapt it, at least in the short run, um, so it would be really hard to actually ramp up additional supplies. Um, you'd have to build additional capacity in factories. Now, one of the things that might hold back building that additional capacity is we don't have any good time frame for how long this coronavirus pandemic is going to last. Is this going to last for another month, two months, three months? Well, without any good time frame, um, it's going to Basically, producers of toilet paper are going to be reluctant to shift over their production to making more. After all, if they shift over their production to making more, and then people go back to work and go back to school, there's not going to be a need for a large supply of toilet paper anymore. So, there's a lot of reluctance to move it over. That gives us an inelastic supply curve. In addition, toilet paper probably is quite inelastic in demand. The reality is for most people, people see toilet paper as a necessary good. So the amount of toilet paper that people need is based on the needs that they have. The reality is, is that people aren't necessarily going to the bathroom all that more. Um, it's just where they're going has changed. And um, the other thing about toilet paper is that basically the price of toilet paper is pretty small compared to your overall income. And as such, both of these factors make it make the demand for toilet paper more inelastic. Now, having an inelastic supply and an inelastic demand curve actually creates some problems if demand increases. If the demand curve increases, like I show it here, the problem is the price is going to go up by a large amount. And actually, the amount of increased quantity you know, brought to market is going to be relatively small. And one of the questions with this large rise in price, which won't have that much significant increase in the amount brought to market, it begs the question, would this be a socially optimal outcome in this situation? Yes, we may not have a shortage, but might, might we have worse problems by allowing the price of toilet paper to go up significantly? What could those problems be? Well, these problems could uh, really show up for the people in supermarkets. Now, an important thing to keep in mind here is that most people buying their toilet paper in supermarkets, supermarkets are not the suppliers of toilet paper. They're more like the market managers of toilet paper. Basically, they manage the marketplace, but suppliers, um, other companies are bringing in the supply. So, for the supermarkets, they actually have um, an individual incentive to actually go for the quotas rather than increase the price. Yes, they know this will create a shortage in the market, but for them, this is actually a better outcome. Why is it a better outcome for supermarkets to have a shortage as opposed to having a much higher price? First of all, if they charge a much higher price for toilet paper, a lot of consumers suddenly would care about it and they'd recognize that price, and they might accuse uh, the supermarket of price gouging, i.e. taking advantage of this crisis for, for their own profit. Um, 
Curiously enough, this could add one more economic inequality problem to our society. Only the rich people get toilet paper. That kind of thing. Sounds absurd, but lots of arguments being made right now in the political arena can sound absurd. Another issue is that suppose the supermarket does raise the price. It's not as if that particular store is going to be able to get that much more toilet paper in the short run. Um, they're pretty much going to get what the producers are producing. So why would a supermarket risk offending its customers um, for some short-run profits, especially when it's not actually going to lead to a market solution? So this can explain why we have this issue of quotas for supermarkets when it comes to uh, purchasing toilet paper and um, why this is not going away, why we have this continuing ongoing shortage. Now, a review of the crucial points here to keep in mind that got us to this point is that first thing, misalignment of production prevents the movement of supply from commercial to the domestic market. We have an inelastic supply curve because of production constraints and inelastic demand because of necessity and income. Plus, the market manager has a preference for keeping the quota. Now, toilet paper, the reason why I bring this up is that toilet paper is not the only good that's suffering from this problem during this uh, coronavirus pandemic. There are lots of goods that are suffering from the very same problem. And you can see this going on throughout the supermarket. Um, and the key thing to keep in mind is this is not a large scale total economy production problem. It's a problem of these specific issues that I mentioned earlier. Um, and some of the other examples of goods would be uh, flour for baking. Suddenly there's a shortage of flour for baking. You can't buy sacks of flour. But that's in part because people like to buy five or ten pound bags of flour, not fifty pound sacks. French fries. There's lots of french fries in the country. The problem is they're packaged up for restaurants. They're not packaged for home consumption. Again, restaurant bags are much larger. Milk and eggs. Again, lots of milk and lots of eggs in this country, but it's not packaged in a way that's convenient for the customers. And meat and fish. Restaurants you know, traditionally buy lots of meat and lots of fish, but this is again not packaged for you know, retail sale in supermarkets. And so the problem, you have these problems of misalignment that are plaguing all of these other industries. And so the key thing, sort of the key takeaway from this is that the shortage of toilet paper or any of these other goods, it's not part of some larger economic conspiracy and it's not some sort of economic failing. It comes out of some very specific microeconomic issues tied to these markets and what's going on right now.